So, hello and welcome to another episode of the Moby Dick School. Today's episode is covering the topic of ISDN gateways and how to set them up with the Moby Dick. Um, up until now, what we've done is we've set up a, a test system and uh, we've done everything via SIP technologies really. So we've integrated SIP phones and so on and so on. Um, but as is often the case with most installations, what we will end up, end, up, end up needing to do is that we'll have to leave this perfect SIP world and somehow enter the older ISDN analog world. Um, when would I need to do that? For example, if I want to integrate analog fax devices or I have an ISDN trunk um, and so on and so on. Um, how do I do that? Well, we need to use a gateway. And what we've got uh, in the Moby Dick is we support a selection of gateways, for example, Astra Deck Gateway, uh, Pattern, and in today's example, we've got a Baronet Gateway set up on the desk. Okay, so if we have a look at this uh, Baronet uh, box here, if I could just quickly uh, show you a few bits and pieces. So what we have here is, uh, of course, the box needs power. Um, so we have our power cable coming in here, and then we have our connection to the network, so the IP world coming in to the back of the box here. Now if I quickly just turn it around, I've turned it into a bit of a convertible, and what you can see here is that normally it has a cover on, but today I've taken it off. Uh, we have two, um, yeah, cards inside there, uh, which will enable you to uh, connect from the uh, SIP world to, uh, to the um, analog ISDN world. And the great thing about these cards is, um, for example, here we've got an interface NOR and interface 1. Uh, we've got mixed technologies. Uh, we have a hybrid card and we also have an ISDN card. Um, but it doesn't just limit to those two. You could, if you wanted to, also integrate uh, a GSM card or uh, other ISDN technologies, for example, EINs uh, connections and so on. Um, so a really good thing about these boxes is you can mix the technologies, so you can have different technologies on both cards. Um, and the way they work is they convert the IP technology uh, into the sort of older ISDN analog technology and they come out of the ports at the front here. Now these ports, uh, each card is assigned to uh, two ports. So uh, this card can take ports three and four, and this card can take ports one and two here. Um, but the great thing about these ports, uh, another really good thing from Baronet, is that through the use of an adapter, you can double the uh, capacity of these ports. So, for example, um, you can put an adapter on here and connect to other uh, devices through the adapter. So they're basically uh, uh, fourfold um, ports. So really good thing there from Baronet. Um, good device. Perfect. Good. Now. What we need to talk about now is how we're going to actually get into the configurations of the device. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go back to our test network in the um, user interface. And uh, as you can see here, we've still got the uh, test network that we set up uh, previously running. And we then click on gateways, gateway list. And here we haven't got any entries in at the moment. Uh, what we need to do is press add. And as I said earlier, we support a few different gateways. Uh, for example, Astra Deck Gateway and Pattern and for today, the bar Baronet. So we're going to click on Barofix uh, VoIP Gateways. And it automatically starts searching for the gateway. Uh, once it's found, you have a few bits and pieces that you can um, set up or um, edit if you want to. Now here, the first thing to notice is that we've got an IP address here. Now this IP address is perfect to our system because we're using the 192.168.100 uh, network. But if, so for example, when you're um, gateway is found, it has a different IP address. Don't worry too much about that because you can actually change that uh, during the configurations process. Um, next thing to consider is that we're looking at the username and password. Uh, as default, they're both set up to admin and admin. Um, and as I said here, if you wanted to change the IP address uh, or need to change the IP address because it's not correct, uh, you can do so. And so we can do here, if you remember, we've got uh, the 30 here. I'm just going to switch it on to the 31. Okay. And then, of course, we need to put in our appropriate subnet mask, which is the 255.255, and so on. Um, select that one. And then here, uh, we need to use the gateway. And as we've mentioned in previous uh, episodes, using the Moby Dick as your ge device gateway is actually a very smart idea. It's a good thing to do. So we're going to set that up too. And as you can see, there we go. So we click on Next. And what happens now is the system will restart and all the configurations will be sent and the device will be reconfigured um, as we're talking. Okay, and once it's done, a confirmation screen appears like we have here. So it's quite a quick little process going on. And we can see here the name of the device and we can also talk about the IP address um, here. So we can see, remember, first time we changed, it was at 30, we changed it to 31. 
So you can see how that's changed now. The MAC address and also a confirmation of the modules we have on board. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've got two different technologies on this device. Um, so on uh, module one, we've got a hybrid module, which is really, really useful for small businesses. Um, because what it means is you can uh, mix the technologies on one card. Um, so on this one, we've got uh, analog uh, ISDN, um, which is great. Because then you can say, OK, on one port, I have my ISDN line. On the other port, I have my analog fax uh, device, saving you a lot of space, uh, also saving you the hassle of having to uh, add an additional card or so on and so on. Um, so this one is really, really good for small businesses um, and so on. Good. So what we do now is we click on Save. And um, what we could do here is we wanted to is just apply the settings and the configurations will be set. But we need to start making some addition, uh, additional edit, uh, configurations so it's ready for um, integrating an ISDN trunk line. So what I do is I select the uh, device uh, by ticking there, click on Edit. And then we have this screen here, which just provides an overview of the data we've already set up. I click on Assignment. And then here we can see that we have an overview of our two modules and how they communicate with each other. This is quite important. First thing to understand is um, you can uh, change these configurations to suit your requirements. At the moment, this setup for us with uh, the hybrid module being uh, the master and the ISDN module being uh, the slave is a pretty good setup for us, so I'm going to keep it at that. Okay, uh, But you can change it if you need to. Um, next thing that we need to do is we need to add the trunk line. So if we click on Add, and then we click on the uh, ISDN trunk line there, and then we double click on the title. We could change the title if we want to. It's in German at the moment. It just basically means ISDN trunk line. Um, we don't need to change it. Uh, so we're going to leave it at that. And then here, really important to consider is that we have uh, the mode of the port. Okay? And we have two options, NT and T. And NT and T are basically two different technologies uh, from the telecom provider, um, whereby they have two different ends. Okay? Uh, we are buying the network from the telecom and then consuming it. Um, and we are at the TE end. So we want to set up TE in this uh, particular um, demonstration. However, should you be, um, for example, coupling uh, different systems and so on, your setup may be a bit different and you may require the NT. Uh, but for us, we just need TE. Next thing to consider is the type of technology that's been uh, used. Um, so we have P2P uh, and PTMP, point to point point to multipoint. Um, more often than not, uh, we would use the point to point uh, technology. Um, point to multipoint, um, yeah, we don't really need it for the uh, majority of the times. But if you do, fine, the settings there are available for you. For us, we're using point to point. OK. Next thing, we need to say which port the ISDN line is going to come in on. OK. Um, for our system, I can just say, all right, um, it's coming in on port 1. If, for example, I have in the cellar um, a cl collection of three or four NTBAs, um, I could then group them together and say, right, they're coming in on port two, port three, and so on and so on. Uh, we don't need to for our system. We're just going to leave it as is and just press OK and then save. OK. Next thing we need to do, press Apply. And the settings will go through to the system, and it will reconfigure itself uh, with all the uh, settings that we've set up here, and it's ready to go. That was it for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until next time. If you need more information, go to the Moby Dick School. Cheers.